In this video, we're going to look at IP packet fragmentation and reassembly. Let's get started. In the last video, we talked through the IP header fields, including some that are dedicated to fragmentation and reassembly, but we didn't talk about how that fragmentation and reassembly actually works. In practice, fragmentation and reassembly are not used very often. However, they are part of the IP protocol, and if you're not aware of how they work, it could end up happening when you're not expecting it and cause negative performance impacts. So we're going to do a quick video about how fragmentation and reassembly work in IP. The link layer, layer two, below IP, will have a maximum transfer size, or MTU. This is a setting on the interface and is typically much smaller than the maximum size that the layer two protocol might support. On the internet, we typically expect an MTU of 1500 bytes. However, it's possible for a link to have a lower MTU, which means our frame could traverse multiple links and then arrive at a link through which it can't fit. IP provides for this by allowing a packet to be fragmented into multiple smaller packets and providing enough header information that on the receiving end, these smaller fragments can be reassembled into the original large packet. Note that this reassembly doesn't happen on the other side of the low MTU link. It happens once the fragments all reach the destination. So we start out with our large packet, and when it reaches the small MTU link, it gets broken up into multiple small packets. Each of these has a complete IP header of its own. So the three small datagrams have all the information that they need to continue traversing the network and reach the destination. When the destination receives them, the IP layer reassembles them into one large datagram before handing them off to the transport layer. So let's see what's going on in the IP header during this process. We've highlighted just the fields that are needed for fragmentation. The fields not pictured here are replicated from the original large datagram to all the fragments when they're created. In this case, we're starting out with a 4,000 byte datagram, and the sender has set it to some IPID that is unique within this flow. Typically, senders increment the IPID for each packet they send, but some operating systems randomize the IPID instead of incrementing it sequentially. The original datagram will have an offset of zero and the more fragments flag also set to zero. When this is fragmented, we see that each of the packets gets a new link, reflecting its new smaller size. It looks like the MTU on this link was 1500 bytes. All three of the fragments get the same IPID as the original datagram, and this will allow the receiver to know that they're all part of the same original packet. The first two fragments also have the more fragments bit set, so as they arrive at the receiver, it will know that there are more fragments to follow that it needs to reassemble. The last fragment has the more fragments flag set to zero, and that's how the receiver can tell it's the last one. Note that the length is the entire packet length, so it includes the header size, 20 bytes with no IP options, and 1480 bytes of data. Our offset for the second packet tells us how many bytes back from the start of the original packet the second fragment starts. To allow the field to be smaller, the offset field is a multiple of 8 bytes. So 185 times 8 gives us 1480, letting us know that the second fragment's first byte is offset 1480 bytes from the start of the original packet's payload. Likewise, the third fragment's offset, 370 multiplied by 8, will give us the offset for its payload relative to the start of the original packet's payload. That wraps up our quick overview of IP fragmentation and reassembly. The process of IP fragmentation puts a significant load on the router that has to do the fragmenting, and so in practice, this is avoided. Operating systems use a mechanism called path MTU discovery to find out what the smallest MTU is along the entire path and just send packets at that size rather than allowing their packets to be fragmented in the core of the internet. However, this process is not 100% foolproof and it's important to be aware of the fact that fragmentation is part of the IP protocol and could be happening so you can be aware of it for troubleshooting needs. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.